Hello everyone, welcome to Good News Internet Broadcasting. My name is Bobby Wibowo and I would like to invite you for a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for your faithfulness, your goodness. Right now, God, we are ready to listen to your words. We want to learn together, Lord, and we would like, Father, to be changed by your words. And we know, Lord, that your words are sharper than any two-edged sword. And we know right now, Father, as we listen to your words, as we are being corrected, as we are being strengthened, we know, Father, that your presence is here with us as well. In the name of Jesus, God's people say, Amen. So this evening, I would like to speak to you, to learn together with you from the book of Matthew. I want to speak to you about the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 24. And with that, let's read that verse together. Matthew, chapter 6, verse 24. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. How many of us has ever, here have ever heard the words that people would say? The love of our money is the root of all evil. Actually, they would just pick that word money and then evil. They'll put it together. But that is not what the Bible says. The Bible tells us, or the Bible is telling us, in the New Testament especially, that the love of money is the root. That is the problem. That is the root of where the evil comes out. It's not money itself, but it is the love of money. Jesus tells us that we cannot serve two masters, God and money. In another translation, it says, God and mammon. Now, how are we then supposed to handle money if the love of it is evil? My brothers, my sisters, the Lord wants us to not be servants to money. We are to make money our servant. How? By making our hearts unattached to it. So first things, it's the most important. Do not let your heart be attached to money. Attach your heart to the Lord, who is the source of all the blessings that we can ever receive in this world. Jesus went on to say, or he went on to teach the people about the fact that we are not supposed to live in this world forever. That one day we will be taken up those who believe in Jesus will be taken up to be with Him. You and I, my brothers and sisters, who have believed Jesus, who have accepted Jesus as our personal saviors, our final destination is the heaven. It is not the earth. Whatever we can accumulate here in this earth will one day, we would just leave everything behind. Of course, we would like to leave um, an inheritance, a good living for our next generation, our children, our grandchildren, even our great-grandchildren as well. However, monetary things, monetary achievements, they are all temporary. What is permanent? What's permanent is the life that we will have after the life in this earth. That is life in heaven. Oftentimes people say, wow, when the pastor starts talking about money, I don't like it. Or when the pastor starts talking about money, it means the church needs help or this or that. However, that's not true, my brothers, my sisters. At least it's not always true. Um, Jesus talked a lot about money. And why did he do that? Because as long as we live in this world, we use money to pay rent, to send our kids to school, for medical expenses, for our car expenses, to start a business, to buy a church building, or to buy a home for your family. 
or to start a new company, to expand your business. That's true. However, one of the most important things that we have to grasp is the fact that when we put God first above all else, when we put and we give to the Lord 10% of our income, as what the Bible says in the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 10, then the Lord will certainly see that we are a person who can be trusted with little. And therefore, the Lord will bless us or entrust us with more things. One time I heard a friend who said, you know, why should we give 10%? You know, that's basically in the Old Testament. It only happened a few times. He went on and talk and talk and talk. But then I came to the conclusion thinking that, okay, if you really have a problem to give 10% to the Lord, if you feel that that's not necessary, I mean, come on then, look at your life. This friend of mine, unfortunately, for a moment had told me that he was in quite a, quite a lot of debt, consumer debts, credit cards and all of that. The thing is this, Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, says the following. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need. Test me, the Lord says. My brothers, my sisters, the blessings until there's no more need happens after the tithe is bring to the Lord 10% of our income. And when we are faithful with that, with the income that we currently have, or the business income that we have, then the Lord surely, who sees us as being faithful, will surely add to us more and more and more things. The book of Malachi and other books in the Bible, they're full of promises. However, we have to put the seeds. We have to show the Lord that we trust in Him. We believe in Him. How do we do that? By obeying His words. Now, it is true that in the book of Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 to 7, here's what it says. The point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must gift as he has decided in his heart not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver. Whoever sows sparingly or a little bit will gain a little bit. And whoever sows a lot or abundantly will get a lot as well. Now, this isn't just about a, basically a trade-off that, okay, God, I give you this much, you better give me this much. It's not about that. But God is looking into our heart hearts that's what matters if we love the lord we will surely give with joy in our hearts when we love someone we would want to give the best for that person and we wouldn't think of it as being a burden but when we do so we're doing it with joy we're grateful to do it when we give that person we are thankful we are happy as well now the lord is teaching us a lot about money as well in the book of Proverbs or finances. It's true, my brothers, my sisters, that although we are not going to take all the possessions we have with us when we die, it is very important that we take care of what we have, the business that God has entrusted us with, the money for our monthly, weekly, daily needs, and even the money that we're putting away for our retirement one day, or our investments. Book of Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24 says this, One gives freely, yet grows all the richer. Another withholds what he should give, and only suffers want. 
Isn't it amazing? The principle that God is teaching us from the Bible is the fact that when we give, we will get back in return even more than what we originally had given. When we give with a grateful heart, when we know that we are not just spending money just for me, myself, and I, but when we are doing it for God's work, for the house of the Lord, for the people who are in need, when we are faithful, we put away our money, salary, business income, whatever it is that we have, partly for the Lord, partly for our expenses, another part for investments, and another part for just regular savings. When we are faithful and we are able to take care of them well, then what will happen in our lives? We will have less stress. We will have more peace. Many more marriages will be even better because there's one less thing to be stressful about. Verse 25 of Proverbs chapter 11 says this, Whoever brings blessing will be enriched, and one who waters will himself be watered. A person who gives to another, a person who joyfully gives his time, his resources for God, that person will be blessed in return, will be watered in return. It's true. Our lives as Christians, it's not just about finances. However, we cannot deny the fact that finances, they're a part of life. To, to send our kids to school, we need finances. To keep the electricity going in the office, again, finances are involved to purchase a new building, perhaps for a ministry. It also would require finances. But as we are taking care of our finances, as we are taking a good care of the things that God has entrusts us with, let us remember to also give with what we have. I'm not saying to give all that you have, but to be able to be wise, to know which portion of the finance that I have is to be given away to those who are in need, which portion is for me and my family, and which portion that is the best is given to the Lord. Proverbs chapter 12, which is the next chapter, verse 9 says this, better to be lowly and have a servant than to play the great man and lack bread. My brothers and my sisters, how many people these days are spending so much of their income in order to look wealthy, in order to have a certain lifestyle, to maintain a certain lifestyle? But that's not what the Bible is telling us. I'm not saying it's not good to um, live a comfortable life. It's okay. It's, it's fine to buy things. However, we have to be wise as to which things we should buy and which things we should not buy. Why should we then keep swiping off our credit card, swiping it up and down to purchase things, clothing, or the newest gadgets, or the newest car, in order that when others see us, others sees us, they would say, oh wow, he's rich, he's successful, or she's successful. My brothers and my sisters, that's not so important. What is important, as the Bible says, is that if we are looking lowly, look like a regular person, but then we have enough to even hire another person, that is much better than just looking like we're a millionaire, but then that person is broke, right? That's, that's not what the Bible is teaching us here. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 24 says this, the hand of the diligent will rule, while the slothful will be put to forced labor. 
Man, slothful is the word. Or lazy. So we cannot be lazy. We can't just sit at home and expect that the Lord will just send blessings while we do nothing. The Bible teaches us that faith without work is dead. That is why my my brothers and my sisters, get up in the morning, work, open up your business, do well in your um, in your career, in order so that the Lord who sees us as a faithful son, a faithful daughter, will reward us for it. Proverbs chapter thirteen, verse eleven says, "Wealth gained hastily will dwindle, but whoever gathers little by little will increase it." How many of us have ever heard of stories, multiple stories perhaps, of people who win lottery? They're winning maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars or even millions, but then a few years later, they went bankrupt. Or a person who had gone to the casino and gambled and won a bit of money, and then next time they came back, they lost even more than what they had won. Or you might say that you've heard people, you know, I just want to have a big business or a business that handles huge deals, but they're not willing to do the small works. Then what's going to happen there? My brothers and my sisters, the Bible is teaching us that whoever gathers little by little will increase it. Furthermore, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 13, verse 22, it says, A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the sinner's wealth is laid up for the righteous. Perhaps there's any of you who said that, hey, you know, the most important thing is that I'm successful who cares about others, right? But that's not true. We have to think about the next generation. Let it be that what we have gathered financially let it be that it's gathered to an honest mean that the lord bless us because my brothers my sisters if we don't do it right then the lord isn't going to bless that if a person has been wronged perhaps you were that person maybe you said well that person had not been honest with me in the business now i lost a lot of money i tried to get it back by legal means and i couldn't or whatever the case might be or you've been cheated perhaps no one thing the lord is still in control and the wealth of the sinners will be laid up to be given eventually for a righteous person let's choose to put god first above all else do not love money love god and handle money well that is what jesus wants us to do to be faithful in little things so that we can then in the future be trusted with big things today if you've never made the lord jesus the lord of your life you never accepted him into your hearts i want you to pray with me this prayer lord jesus come into my heart i repent of my sins be my lord and my savior my brothers my sisters if you've prayed that prayer and you believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead and that you believe that Jesus is Lord, you confess that He is Lord, He is your Lord and Savior. You have been born again. You've been saved. But don't just stop there. Get a Bible. Read the Bible. Put it into practice. Come to church. Worship together with brothers and sisters who love the Lord. And for any of us here, faithful listeners who've been listening, who loves Jesus so much, who've been doing what Jesus has been telling you to do, I'd like to pray for each and every one of you as well. Father, I pray for each and every one of the listeners here, God, those who've been faithful throughout the years, those who've been putting into practice your teachings. Oh Lord, I pray, may you bless their life, strengthen them in their times of needs. And if there's any of them who are sick, Father, May your blood covers them and heals them. Father, thank you for this evening. We praise you, God, because you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. We're not afraid 
Because we know, Lord, before tomorrow comes, you're already there. That's why, Father, we can stay secured, knowing that you, O oh Lord, are always with us. You never leave us nor forsake us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all, and see you next time.